It almost feels like we've been building up to this. Yeah. Both our and we, we, we simply can't wait long enough for the eight years it's going to take us to get to this point. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, so we've been covering the Simpsons and also doing a thing called Shit's Peak, which is seen as things that are considered the worst of a certain thing. I can album the worst of an artist's discography or like the worst film in a series or episode in a TV show. This episode is almost seen as like an archetype of Jumping the Shark, a show that used to be great and then this is sort of the pivot point for a lot of people in terms of The Simpsons going bad. What episode did we watch? The Principal and the Pauper. Would you like to briefly describe the events of the episode? Of course. Um, this episode is centred on Seymour Skinner. Um, the town is celebrating his 20 years as principal, the sterling work he's done in his time at Springfield Elementary and having like a, like a celebration of his life and accomplishments. I would certainly out of nowhere, the real Seymour Skinner appears, who's a hero in Vietnam. Played by Martin Sheen from uh, uh, Apocalypse Now. Oh, yes, yes. Um, he um, taught Skinner what it is to, to live life to the full, because before, before he joined Vietnam, he was, Skinner was actually a guy called Armin Tanzarian, who was a street punk. <laughs> street punk. Uh, and uh, he, he stole from people, and for a set of circumstances, he ended up joining the army. He was about to go to jail. To the Nam. Right, to Nam, yep. Um, and it's fair that he meets Principal Bob well, Skinner, um, and uh, Skinner dies during the war, and Arnold, or Armand, Armand, uh, Armand uh, decides to go out to Springfield and inform Skinner's mother that uh, he is dead. Um, instead, his mum thinks he's Skinner, and Skinner at that point decides to take on the, the persona of Principal Skinner. Then no one, no one likes the real Skinner, they kick him out of town, and then the status quo is restored, and we'll never mention the fact that um, um, Skinner is actually Armand again. Yeah. That's basically the crux of the episode. I'd actually forgotten how much of this episode there was before the reveal. There's like a good like five minutes before, yeah. and very little time is actually given to when it's actually a lot of it's more backstory and yeah. and like Armin's story and it is actually the people adjusting to the new Skinner. Okay, so I think this episode gets a bad rep. I like it. I don't like it, but I see what they were going for. <laughs> yeah. Right. So. In the illuminating commentary yeah. uh, on the uh, on the DVD, um, the writer basically said that this story is basically about a town full of people who don't like change. Yep. And it's a kind of meta commentary on situation comedies where the status quo has always got to return back to the way it was beforehand. And this is a, a, a town that doesn't like change. Um, and. The, the, the joke is that the real, the real Principal Skinner comes, but the town is so stuck in TV show writing that they can't escape from this, and they have to stick to the status quo. They have to return to that status quo in the end somehow, no matter what. Yeah. They can't face the concept of change. Which is a good idea. It's a really great idea. But I can see how it would have been lost on people. Yeah. I could, you know, a lot of people were very pissed off when this episode first came out. Uh, a lot well, of people were very upset. To be fair, there is all the only meta commentary is in the last minute. Yeah, where yeah. the judge is like, and it'll never be mentioned again, other than on period of torture. And then it's a bit like, oh, I get it. Yeah, you know, it's not like the writers were running out of ideas or anything. It was, I, th I think, they were trying to make a joke. Yeah. About the nature of situation comedies and the, the status quo. Yeah, that's what they were going for. But it all comes in the last minute. Yeah, it's not like. Sprinkled throughout the episode. Well, they don't do enough to make it like it's not a normal episode. Yeah. Like, they would have had to establish more of a sort of like this is an alternate reality kind of thing. Yeah. They do. It's too. It's it's a rare criticism where some it's too grounded. Yeah. It actually is. Yes. It's too grounded for it to work. Because on. because they they try to make you emotionally care. Yeah. That's what you know like the you because you're upset that Skinner has been revealed as being a fraud. Yeah, and you know you you see him skulking off and leaving, and he has to leave town and stuff, and so you you're emotionally invested. 
Which means the last minute is like a slap yeah. in the face. Basically, yeah. Because it's yeah. like you've invested in this storyline and there's all like this like sad music playing when yeah. he goes and there's sort of an element of like tragedy in sort of the fact that this young man's built a life and now it's been destroyed that they're clearly going for, which is at odds with the ending. Yeah. It's like, oh, but none of that matters. You, you either go for pure third wall, fourth wall breaking humour, like in the last minute, yeah. or you go for an emotional episode where the status quo is completely changed. Yeah. You either go for that, but we don't do that. They do like an in-between kind of thing. Now, the writer says in the commentary that um, there were some lines that were cut out throughout the episode which alludes to the fact that it was fourth wall breaking. Yeah. But that's what they were going for. But because those lines were cut and we're only left with this episode, I feel you're left with a massive mixed bag. Well, I feel the right way to go about it, if you were going to go fourth wall, would be something where Skinner tries to adopt the personality of other Simpsons characters or something, failingly, like in a meta joke about, like, oh, he's trying to be this person now or something. Or he goes to like another place which is like Springfield but it's slightly off. Shelbyville. Yeah, he could have yeah. gone become principal at Shelbyville. Yeah. And all the kids are like called Bort or yeah. Liza or something. Yeah. And they're all like, co like skewed versions of the actual characters. That would have been clever. That would have been clever. And then at the end they guess get him back or something and Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> now admittedly there are some I do think there are some really funny jokes. And some really, really great I think there's some great there's some, I think in terms of like, Harry Shearer's performance is amazing. Yeah. I love the idea of um, Skinner going back to being like a, a street punk. Yeah. That's hilarious. Yeah. I, I love that idea. Yeah. But we don't really do enough with it. I love the bit where, I think this episode is just too short. There's yeah. just not enough time given to what they're trying to do. Yeah. Like, there's not enough time spent in Capital City for you to get the idea of him being a street punk. There's yeah. not enough time given to the new Skinner to make him annoying enough for the audience to want yeah. the old Skinner back. And there's not enough time given to the ending for us to be like, oh, everything's back. The only the only thing that feels right is the first act, right before he becomes out yeah. as Skinner, yeah. as Armin, because that's given enough time to breathe. Yeah. Yeah, me you were saying. Uh, no, that's pretty much it. Yeah, no, yeah. I, I, I agree with you. Yeah, um, but I think outside of what the episode means, the episode is still a really funny episode. It, it, it's funny. I like the jokes. Yeah, the, the jokes are the jokes are still really good. Yeah, um, but I find it a very confused episode in that what he's trying to do. Yeah, and that's my ultimate criticism of it. So it's one that I don't think is as bad as Super Mega out to be. No, I think a lot of people maybe just saw it as The Simpsons running out of literally running out of ideas and then backtracking on themselves. But yeah, that's part of the joke. <laughs> yeah. That's the joke. But, yeah. you know, the problem is about the Simpsons up to this point. You know, it's done far more breaking stuff before, but never to the extent of that. No. So, it's almost ahead of its time. Yeah. I'm, I'm actually going to say, yeah, I am going to say that it's almost ahead of its time. Because, like, you know, far more breaking humour is a standard of animated sitcoms these days. You know, so, like, Family Guy does it all the time, or South Park, or yeah. uh, Bob's Burgers, or whatever, you know. They're, very, they're constantly referencing the fact that this is a show yeah. all the time. You know, in the episode of Family Guy, they even go back in time to the first episode, and they take the piss out of the crap animation. Yeah. Um, but I don't think anything would be done like that before, and certainly in prime time animation. Well, only really precedent is other episodes of The Simpsons. Like, and King of the Hill. And King of the, King of the Hill wasn't even on at this point. No, no, it, no it, it was. Because they, they, in Matt Groening's intro... Yeah, I think this was the first up. season, though. No, uh, well, it was still on, though, wasn't it? I, mean, I thought it had started after that, and it was like a cross-promotion no, with Fox. No, King of the Hill only going on for ages. Well, for, 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 for a couple of seasons, I'm guessing. Okay. It's, King of the Hill is a lot older than people realise. Okay. And these episodes were aired about, like, 1999 Okay. Ish. Yeah. Something like that, so it, it, it add up. Yeah. But anyway, yeah, yeah. So yeah. the only animated show I could compare would be King of the Hill and South Park. Yeah. Why does this episode not work as well then as Itch and Scratchy and Poochie, or even better, Homer's Enemy? Homer's Enemy is an explicitly third um, fourth wall because breaking Because in Homer's Enemy, the concept is quite clear. Yeah. What would happen if a normal person went into the world of The Simpsons? Yeah. And the comedy. It's set up right from the start. Yeah. And it's beautifully done and beautifully handled. See, that's an episode not a lot of people like. It's a great episode. It's a I, I love it. I love it. It's always one of the best episodes. But, you know, for what the, again, what the writers have said, what they've noticed is that it's a generational thing. 
Yeah. People who maybe grew up watching like the classics, golden age stuff, we're talking two, three, four, uh, yeah. when it actually aired, they hold them as being the best episodes and they don't like the kind of six, seven, eight stuff. Well, six, seven, eight stuff, that's like prime for me. That's like gold. Well, that whole period from two to eight is like gold for me, but... Um, you know, an episode like Frank Grimes is one that's not very popular with older fans. Ah, uh, that's a great which I don't get. I, I love it. I think it's really funny. Yeah. But, like I said, I think the comedy rules in the episode are set out really well at the start. Yeah. But the fact that what would happen if a normal person with normal values entered the world of The Simpsons and they make loads of jokes throughout the episode, like yeah. about how Frank Grimes can't believe that Homer Simpson exists. Like, you know. Like, Homer, you live in this massive house with a, a beautiful wife and you've got a, a son that owns a factory and you've got, you got lobsters for dinner and they do all these jokes about, like, how The Simpsons basically makes no sense. Yeah. And um, that's for fall fall breaking humour. This one doesn't do that. Well, it's because it treats the concept seriously. That's it, yeah. It treats yeah. it as an emotional experience as opposed to a satirical one. Yeah. Which is what we should have done. Yeah. That's, what's, that's the problem with it. It'd be interesting watching this now, since it has the same plot as that show, Mad Men. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. To that's, see what that's they what do That's what all the people on the AV Club were saying. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's the same plot as that. It is the same, it is the same plot as Mad Men, yeah. 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 I also imagine I'd have a, like, a different opinion if I was watching this when it aired. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I would be annoyed then, because it's just... It, it is... It is a middle finger to the fans. Yeah. Basically. It's also slightly wacky and... I don't know, is it, is it wacky and no that's been before? I don't, I don't think so. I don't think it is. I just think the actual central plot is a big leap of faith. Yeah. Um, and I think the fact that it's a little bit confused, it's what it's trying to do. Yeah. Um, the writer defends it, and the writers on the commentary defend it as being one of the best episodes out of The Simpsons ever. <laughs> which I strongly disagree with. No. Um, it's got some great gags in. Like, yeah. I love the one where they go through the car and it's like, Homer's there and he's like, why is she here? Why is oh, she here? Yeah. Why are you here? Why am I here? And then he cuts. Because it's actually quite. It's just a visual gag where it's like yeah. boom, boom, person, 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 and yeah. It works. And yeah. I love the way Harry Shearer does the bit where he reads um, Naked Lady. Oh, yeah, that's the best yeah, thing, yeah. thing there. Wearing the smile. Yeah. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Six. Naked Ladies. <laughs> yeah. See, it's got some great stuff in. Yeah, but there's some great jokes. Yeah. This is a bit matters to me, season nine. Season 9 is the first less than great season. Yeah. Because it's like, well, apart from the first, we never speak of the first again. No, go back there again. No. But um, but season 9 is like, there's some great jokes in there. Cast are all on form. It's just the plotting's a lot weaker. Yeah. Because they're already on to like 200 episodes. They probably yeah. don't, they've probably run out of, like, it's pretty hard to keep going back to emotional well and stuff. Yeah. If you're never going to change the status quo. I'd have been interested to see what they'd have done if they had actually decided to make some kind of big change. I've always, I've said this, so it's an idea me and Andrew, my brother, had. Yeah. Um, and we said, what they should do is they should do a time skip. Time skip. They should bring the characters forward five years. Bart and Lisa are now teenagers and are in high school. Homer is closing in on retirement age at the power plant. Marge is now having to deal with that, but Maggie is growing up and she's becoming a young toddler. You can maybe even have Maggie starting to talk. Mr. Burns might have passed away in those years, and Smooth is dealing with the loss of Mr. Burns. Um, you know, you can have all sorts. You, you, you could have jokes about Flanders dealing with the fact that his children are growing up, and basically, maybe his children could have realised that, you know, they don't believe in Christianity, and how does Ned deal with that? Yeah. Maybe Chief Wiggum's gone on a firefighting scheme. Skip them forward four or five years. That opens up to possibilities of all sorts of new plot potential. Easy but they're, ne just, they're no. never going to do it. No. Well, you could easily just have a whole season where it's just like focusing on a single character and how they deal with that and stuff. I'd say there's plenty of ways they could keep The Simpsons interesting. The problem is they don't want to shake up the format. No, because there's too much money There's involved. too much money at stake. <laughs> yeah. They're not going to experiment with... They're not going to take the risk because right, basically the, the writers who are dealing with these characters now are not the people who invented the characters no. and they don't want to experiment with these pre-established characters. It's like writing for, I don't know, Fred Flintstone, for example. Yeah. You know, like, you're not going to change Fred Flintstone no. and you're not going to change Homer Simpson because people know what it's like and people don't like change. 
almost like this episode, <laughs> like what, yeah. I mean, what this episode is all about, it's a town people don't like change. Equally, the writers of The Simpsons know people don't like change, so they're not going to even attempt it. <laughs> no. I don't know. Skip it forward four or five years. Make them a bit older. Yeah. That opens up to all sorts of potential opportunities for new emotional episodes. Yeah. Why not, you know, The Simpsons is so successful at this point, why not give it a go, I say? Yeah. You'll be an interesting one. What would you give the principal and pop out of ten? I think we're going to have a very, a very wide difference. Six. I was going to say seven or eight. I'm going for a six. I was going to go for My a seven. My reasoning is, is the jokes are good, but there still isn't anything as great as there is in like season six. Like no, no, because that, I mean the. the the tr the star of I'm gonna give I'm gonna give it a seven because I loved Agnes in this one. Oh, that was great. Yeah. Skinner's mum was on top form in this episode. <laughs> yeah. So it's a very high six or a low seven depending on my mood. Yeah. Um, it's somewhere in between. Agnes was on top form. She was really funny in this episode. Yeah. And you realise kind of how basically how batshit crazy she is. <laughs> yeah. She just accepts a stranger as a son. Yeah. That's weird. Um. And she has some great lines. Other than that, I think the plotting is muddled. They don't. They have a great idea. Yeah. But they don't quite know how to do it. No. And I don't care if the writer says a couple of lines were cut out. The basic concept wasn't really thought out. No. The way I think it should have been done. Um. I mean, you know, it's it's an episode. You know, it was made like twenty years ago. Well, fifteen years ago now, and you know, time has passed and. It's not as bad as people say it is. No. I, don't think, I think The Simpsons has done a lot worse. I don't even think this is the worst episode of this season. No. No. No, there's worse ones. But there's none which have stung quite as hard. No. The Sun was a really controversial one. Well, because it represents so much. That's it, yeah. For a lot of people, this is where The Simpsons started to go downhill. Which I do agree. Yeah. I, I, I can't dispute that. I do agree. Um, but at the same time... Give it a rewatch, I think, because it's not as bad as you remember it being. No. They tried to do something, but it didn't really work. I prefer this than the modern ones where it's all just the exact same sort of stuff and there's no risks being but, taken. Yeah, no, that's true. That's true. They tried, that's if they tried something different. It didn't work. No. But they tried. Yeah. Okay, it's now respect them for that. Exactly. Um, so it's not that bad. No. So... Uh, Pretty good. A high six now. I'm calling it okay to good. Uh, and uh, with this one, I, I'm even trying to give it a question mark. A question mark. Because no, I, no, I, I don't think know. Just the episode itself is strong. No, I, I, I don't think it's strong because I don't think the central plot works. No. Which is like the most important thing of a Simpsons episode. So I don't think it's strong. I think it works okay. The, jo the jokes work. Apart from the last minute where they resolve it just in a shit sort of, like, ribbon on a bow way. I think it works up until then. But then you got to look at it as a whole. Yeah. And I, 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 as a whole, by having that scene on the end, it confuses the message of the whole yeah. episode. How would you have liked to have seen it end? It's, it's, well, it, it's like eating a cake, and I find that the cake has been laced with cyanide. <laughs> I, I really enjoyed eating that cake, but <laughs> my man, do I feel a bit lightheaded at the moment. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? It is it is difficult this one. It's a very difficult there's, one. There's a lot of good stuff in it. Yeah. But it's second like, like a rotted apple. Because well, it looks looks good on the outside, but on the inside it's Yeah, there's rotten. good stuff on the outside, but the core is rotten. Yeah. Yeah. Lot lots of food metaphors. Lots tonight. of food metaphors today. Lot, lot, lots of uh, product placement for Ben and Jerry's and <laughs> apples. <laughs> product placement for apples. Yeah, they need to sell they more. Need they need to sell more. Yeah. Uh, it's not as bad as people say it is, but I can see where the criticisms come from. It's a masterpiece compared to the, uh, the alligator one last yes. week. Yes. This one felt like five minutes compared to that. Kill the alligator. Oh, the God, that was awful. It was. That was that was one of the worst things ever. Yes. What do you think of the principal and the pauper? 